Earthquake resistant design as per Indian standard code is becoming increasingly complex and we are required to perform uh, advanced analysis like response spectrum analysis, P delta analysis, push over analysis, nonlinear time history analysis, etc. So if uh, we do not understand fundamentals of uh, analysis or let's say if our software application is not correct, uh, then, then the results could be completely wrong. Right? So if we talk about uh, advanced analysis requirements as per uh, different Indian standard codes, uh, then as per IS 800-2007 section 12, it requires to demonstrate that the structure should be able to withstand inelastic displacement corresponding to joint rotation of 0 0.04 radian for spatial concentrically pressed frame as well as for spatial moment frame. IS 1893 part 4, uh, which is for the in, uh, industrial structures, is uh, defining the requirement for performing nonlinear time history analysis for verification of the collapse mechanism. And also, uh, as per IS 1893 part 4, 2015, P delta analysis is mandatory for all industrial structures, irrespective of any material of construction. IS 16700 also requires advanced analysis like push over analysis, time history analysis, etc. The different types of analysis which we are going to cover in this course are response spectrum analysis, P delta analysis, push over analysis, linear time history analysis, and non linear time history analysis. Okay. So we'll start uh, our uh, course with the basics of uh, structural dynamics, because when we talk about earthquake resistant design, then it is uh, utmost important to understand fundamentals of structural dynamics. So we'll start uh, our discussion with a single degree of freedom, wherein we will try to understand the concept of natural frequency, time period, uh, mode shapes, damping, etc. So for this, we will be generating uh, the study models in, in the ETAP software. So with that, uh, it would be very easy to understand the fundamentals of structural dynamics. In the next session, also we'll uh, continue with the uh, fundamentals of structural dynamics like uh, multi-degree of freedom, resonance, uh, over damping, under damping, etc. So in the next session, we'll start with the response spectrum analysis. So firstly, we'll start with uh, basics of response spectrum analysis, when to perform response spectrum analysis, major limitations of response spectrum analysis, etc. In the next session, we will uh, experiment this response spectrum analysis with uh, st different study models. And we'll try uh, to compare the results between the models by varying uh, certain parameters in the uh, software. We'll also try to see uh, the software application for the uh, response spectrum analysis in the uh, EDAP software. Consideration of torsional eccentricity is very important uh, in the software for earthquake resistant design and, and in several files I have seen that the torsional eccentricity is not considered appropriately in the software. So that's what we are going to discuss along with the uh, study models. So after having better understanding about uh, response spectrum analysis, we will perform uh, the same analysis on the G plus 30 building. Uh, and then we will have very interesting discussions on the results, whatever we derive out of uh, that analysis. We'll also discuss about uh, do's and don'ts about uh, response spectrum method. Thereafter, we'll start with the uh, P-delta analysis. So firstly, we'll understand uh, overview of P-delta analysis, basics of P-delta analysis. Now, firstly, we'll try to understand that when it is required to perform P-delta analysis uh, as per the Indian standard course. Right? We'll discuss about uh, a couple of approaches uh, which are used in the software for the P-delta analysis. We'll also discuss about uh, limitations of uh, each approach uh, which is being used in the software. And of course, we will perform uh, this P delta analysis on the uh, study models. In the next session, we'll perform a P delta analysis on similar G plus uh, 30 building. Uh, and we will uh, have very interesting discussions again uh, after deriving the results after performing a P delta analysis. So after completing uh, our uh, detailed discussion on P delta analysis, response spectrum uh, analysis, we will start our discussion on a very important type of analysis, which is nonlinear static analysis, which is generally called as a pushover analysis.
So firstly, we'll talk about uh, uh, basics of pushover uh, analysis. When it is actually required to perform pushover uh, analysis? What are the limitations of pushover analysis? What, are, what is the overall methodology adopted in the software for the pushover analysis, etc.? In the next session, we will perform uh, pushover analysis on, on the several study models and we will try to see the impact of each parameter on the output, watch, whatever we are, we are getting after performing pushover analysis. And we will also discuss about interpretation of the results, uh, whatever we receive after pushover analysis. That is extremely important. In the next session, we'll perform pushover analysis on G plus 30 building. Now, uh, in this analysis, we'll also combine P delta analysis together so that uh, we'll also include uh, the geometrical nonlinearity along with the material nonlinearity, right? After performing a pushover analysis uh, on G plus 30 building, we will observe the collapse mechanism. Uh, which we are getting uh, and if the collapse mechanism is not desired then we will perform several iterations right? uh, and once we perform several iterations we will have uh, very interesting data uh, and that's what you know we will discuss so time history analysis is the most uh, advanced analysis we can say out of all the analysis so in the time history analysis we'll be actually applying earthquake uh, forces considering random ground motion side. Right? So firstly, we'll talk about uh, basics of time history analysis, when uh, we should consider time history uh, analysis. What is the overall methodology which is considered in the software for the uh, time history analysis? We'll talk about how to select uh, the appropriate uh, ground motions, how to scale uh, the uh, ground motions, and of course, uh, what are the limitations of uh, time history analysis method? Thereafter, we will perform nonlinear time history analysis on uh, different study models and we will observe the collapse mechanism, whatever we achieve, let's say, after performing nonlinear time history analysis. So, the same collapse mechanism we will compare with the uh, push or analysis. We will also compare the results of uh, nonlinear time history analysis uh, with the push or analysis as well as with the response spectrum analysis. In the next session, we'll perform time history analysis on uh, G plus 30 building. Uh, and of course, after performing this analysis, we will have a very close look at the collapse mechanism which we are achieving. Right? We will see the different options available uh, in the software also. Uh, and the most importantly, at the towards the end of the session, we will highlight uh, the do's and don'ts when we are approaching or when we are adopting uh, non-linear time history analysis in the real projects. So after having uh, very detailed discussions about uh, different types of analysis like response spectrum analysis, p delta analysis, uh, push or analysis, non-linear time history analysis. So we'll discuss about uh, what should be a general approach while designing the different structures and which type of analysis uh, should be adopted in the particular conditions. What are the pros and cons of uh, different types of uh, analysis, right? Towards end of the course, we will discuss about uh, performance-based uh, uh, design. Uh, so what is performance-based design? Uh, what is the history of performance-based design? What is current status of performance-based design in the global industry? How to uh, perform a performance-based design for typical structure? How to identify performance-based criteria? So those type of interesting points uh, we will discuss. We'll also uh, try to simulate a couple of performance criteria uh, on the study models. And finally, we will discuss about uh, interpretation of the results we obtain after performing, uh, let's say, performance-based design for a couple of simulated criteria. In the last session, we'll take up balance uh, queries uh, from the uh, participants. We'll also discuss about way forward, concluding remarks, etc. So looking forward to see you inside this uh, unique online course. Thank you.